fight against all odds. True rebels never give up. Yet they cannot triumph alone. The uprising has begun. But who will lead the revolution? And for a rich charity worker. So you see how versatile my loyalties can be. All stand to attention for the Queen of Albion. Logan, former king of Albion, you stand accused today of crimes against the kingdom and its people. Those who brought you to justice will now speak. There's not a soul alive in the kingdom who hasn't suffered for his glory and plenty who've died for it. I says, let him have some death of his own. Look, I'm not one for lopping people's heads off, but we saw Major Swift executed like it was a bloody circus act. He deserves nothing less as far as I'm concerned. But aren't we better than that? Isn't that why we fought to be here now? I've seen what Logan has done to this city. People starving to death, children forced to work, but killing him now won't solve anything. It is not my place to decide his fate, but his betrayal condemned many of my people to death. He promised us salvation and then left us to face the darkness alone. I had good reason to break that promise, and I had good reason for the crimes you claim I committed. The day I returned to Albion, I received a visit from a blind seer, Teresa, our mother's guide. She showed me the future of this kingdom. The darkness in Aurora is coming here, bringing death, destruction, the end of our way of life. The sacrifices I had to make, I did them to protect Albion. If a few had to suffer, it was to build an army. If a few had to die, it was to save a country. I have spent years preparing for this attack. Let me stand by your side now, and all my soldiers will be yours to command. Let us face the coming darkness, together. If this is true, if it's really coming here, we are all in grave danger. You have the power over life and death, sister. Now choose. This is not the time for revenge. We need your help, Logan. The Queen has made her decision. Logan's life will be spared. I know you will never forgive me for the things I've done. You told me so once, remember? Of course I do. But what matters now is that we defend our land. The castle is yours, and so is the throne. I'm glad to be rid of them. You have fulfilled the first part of your destiny. You were little more than a child when you left the castle. You have become a hero, a leader, and now, finally, a monarch. But your journey is not yet done. Now you are queen, you can know the truth. Albion will soon be attacked, and the threat could not be greater. Darkness is coming to our land. It cannot be reasoned with, it cannot be halted. The ruler of Albion is all that stands between the world we inhabit and that darkness. That is why you had to take your brother's place. 
The course of history demands it. If you do not succeed, everything we know will come to an end. Why didn't you tell me all this at the start? It was never about Logan, was it? I told you what you needed to know, and I never spoke anything but the truth. With Logan on the throne, Albin would have been doomed. This much I know. Only with a hero wearing the crown do we stand a chance of survival. And how do I stop it? You won't. Its arrival is inevitable. One year from now, the darkness will fall upon Albion. All you can do is prepare, and hope to save as many of your people as you can. How you do so is up to you. Two paths lie ahead. You may keep the promises you have made and be known as a benevolent ruler. But understand that doing so will leave little to spend on the kingdom's protection and may lead you to disaster. It is not easy to be popular and keep the treasury full, unless you are willing to sacrifice your personal wealth. But you may also choose to break those promises, to harm your people in order to save them. You will not lack the means to build the army you need, but you will be hated. This path will cast you in the role of a tyrant, as it did your brother. You have one year to do what Logan could not. Be the ruler that readies Albion for the greatest threat it has ever faced. And be the hero that can stand against it. Your Majesty, I'm not sure what to say after receiving such news. The darkness that is coming. People won't understand what it means. Nobody could, without living through it first. We need to prepare. If we can't stop the attack from happening, we have to be ready when it comes. Having Logan's troops on our side is a good start. But you will need to raise a fortune to pay for the army we'll need. Hobson will show you the treasury, and I'm sure he can explain just how to fill it. Indeed I can. Then I will leave you to it. Ben and I will begin recruiting and training soldiers at once. If you will follow me, Your Majesty. Oh, how I have looked forward to this moment. This is it. Albion's royal treasury, the store of the kingdom's total wealth. It's, well, not as um, replete as one would like, but just imagine this room shimmering with hills, valleys, and plateaus of gold, a topography of riches going all the way up 
to the ceiling. It will require nothing less to build this army everyone is talking about. Which brings us to the second item on today's agenda, and one I'm personally very excited about. Setting the tax rate for the coming year. As you probably know, your brother was taxing the people rather heavily, and some say that this has led to poverty, starvation, and hate. Two, maintain Logan's policies. Not a popular move with the people, but moderately popular with the treasury. And three, and don't let my enthusiasm influence you in any way, Raise the taxes even further. True, many will suffer in the short term, but we will be able to protect the kingdom and run our fingertips over vast amounts of gold in, in this very room. What will it be, Your Majesty? Very well, Your Majesty. A prudent choice. Why upset the status quo? The time for revolution has passed, and people are used to the current rate of poverty and starvation. Those who survive will thank you in the end. But you will still need to raise a lot more gold by other means. Unless you're willing to donate some of your own money to the treasury. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I do like a little joke now and then. However you decide to proceed, you should acquaint yourself with the royal ledger. It is a logbook that allows the reigning monarch to make deposits and withdrawals from the treasury. A most useful financial tool. But my, look at the time. You really ought to attend to the next item on today's agenda. Reva has a most intriguing proposal for you in Bowerstone Industrial. Now, I know you have had your differences, but it is time to put those behind you and work together. Nobody can raise money like Reaver can, I assure you. I have seen to it that your appearance among the populace is well publicized, so expect a crowd. Don't tempt me, Weaver. I shot you once, I'll do it again. Oh, happy day! Her Majesty, the Queen of Albion, graces us with her radiant presence. I knew last time we met that you would emerge victorious from such public sibling rivalry. And now, here I am, to assist you in filling your coffers till they are fit to burst. What better way to begin your reign than by reinstating one of my most successful policies? There is no greater waste than the idleness of our city's youth, but my employment scheme guarantees children of all ages will have something to occupy them, whilst ensuring our factories are properly manned. That's... it's just monstrous. Don't listen to him. You promised you would end child labor. Remember that promise now. And what would you have us do with the snotty little indigents? The only way Bowerstone is going to climb out of the gutter is through education. Nothing is more important to our future than that. Turn this factory into a school. Give the children of this city the chance they never had. A school? Well, that's an original thought. Well, if you'd like to be known as a pauper monarch, then by all means, listen to her. Reaver Industries will abide by your decision. The factory will become a school. Thank you. We can really start changing people's lives now. This will be an Albion worth fighting for. I shall begin the necessary modifications at once.
Welcome to Reva Industries Learning Center, Bowerstone Industrial's first ever school. You can now feel secure in the knowledge that your children can become the well-educated automatons you always wanted them to be. Ready to serve, Your Majesty. Hey! The Queen! Where's Greetings, that? my liege. Jeez! Hey, hey, hey. Wow! It's the Queen! It's the queen. Wow. Long live the Queen! No, we're not the cheapest, but that's because we carry the best. No, no, no. You can't wear those clothes in public. What were you thinking? I'm Bowerstone's most trustworthy salesman. Ask Greetings, my lady. Your awesome Greetings, ma'am. Greetings, ma'am. I'm at your command. Greetings, your majesty. At your orders, ma'am. Madam. The Queen. Greetings, most beloved, mighty sovereign of all the land. Today, you will decide what is to be done with the Bowerstone Old Quarter, site of the Battle for Albion. Paige will offer her proposal. Reva shall stand against her. You may speak. Your Majesty. Our victory came at a great cost to the city. You vowed to fight poverty, but our actions have made the problem worse. You must act now. I ask that the old quarter be rebuilt and its former residents rehomed. You wouldn't just be helping those in great need. You'd be sending a message to your people. They're scared, Your Majesty. Let them know they can count on you. Your Majesty, the old quarter was indeed devastated by your glorious triumph, but as its name subtly implies, it was old. The cost of rebuilding the area would be a colossal waste of money, and the people who called its decrepit shambles of streets and houses their home are better off without it. Besides, one must question what they have to offer our society. Why build homes for the inept and the unskilled? I recommend you reject Paige's proposal and keep the money for more deserving endeavors. It was our actions that caused the devastation, Your Majesty. But the final decision rests with you. We destroyed the old quarter. It's only right we rebuild it. The Queen has reached her decision. The old quarter shall be rebuilt, and its former residents will have their homes returned. Thank you, Your Majesty. This will be a very popular move. 
I suppose there may be something to be gained by rebuilding part of the city. It shows our sense of industry has not yet been dampened. Very well, Your Majesty. Despite the current old quarter. It breaks one's heart to see the treasury so empty. If we don't do something about it, we will all die. And I have some very definitive retirement plans. As a matter of fact, our very first order of business might have a bearing on our financial situation. The time has come to decide the annual town guard budget. As you can imagine, the people like to complain about crime and the lack of safety on our streets and are calling for more guards than your brother was ever willing to pay for. Indeed, Your Majesty. Why make any changes in such an innocuous matter? So people don't feel safe. Is that such a terrible thing? Let us now turn our attention to the rest of today's business. Here is the royal schedule I have prepared. As you can see, you have a busy day in the court, but a tremendously enjoyable one. Decoration is a passion of mine, and I simply cannot wait to see your choice. The interior designers await you in the throne room. My lady. Madam. Her Majesty, the Queen of Albion. What a lovely you. Today you decide on the decor of the castle. Two of Albion's greatest interior designers have come to present their suggestions. You may speak. Your Majesty, I am Herman Worthy, and I have a design in mind that will blow your little royal socks off. Imagine a celestial scheme capable of lifting the shadows that haunt these halls. A fabulous balance of serene hues that announce to the world, I am a strong, virtuous leader. Hear me roar. But also, look how pretty my home is. You are an enlightened queen. Let the heart of your castle be enlightened too. Celestial? Serene? Pretty? Do you wish to be known as a ruler or as a fool? I am Sybil Maleficent, Your Majesty, and I can tell you that people respect what they fear. This castle should be a fortress of dread. I propose that we flood the rooms and corridors with blood, or at least a suitable paint substitute. Let all those who look upon this palace know terror, whether they be your subjects or your enemies. It may seem trivial, but appearances can affect the opinion of the entire kingdom. The choice is yours, Your Majesty. I wish this to be an enlightened castle. Oh, fabulous, Your Majesty, fabulous! Your castle will be a vision of purity. And what's more, fashion and good taste must choke down their nausea. Today, you decide on the future of Aurora, Your Majesty. Kaylin will speak for her people. Reva will dispute her cause. You may speak. I am here to seek the protection you promised. It is too long since my people felt safe or knew of life without suffering. We were honored to join your fight to claim Albion now it is time we joined your kingdom. Do what your brother failed to do. 
Help us to rebuild Aurora, and protect it as you would your own land. There is nothing so noble as embracing other cultures, and I, for one, could not be happier to count Aurora as part of Albion. But surely they must work for that privilege, and I happen to know just how to put them to good service. There is an abandoned mine in the Auroran Desert that holds enough materials to benefit the whole kingdom. Let us employ Kaelin and her people to gather what resources there may be. That can be their payment. You are talking about forced labor. Well, let's not get bogged down in semantics. It's a fair transaction. I know you will not break your oath. You understand what we have been through. The choice is yours, Your Majesty. I will keep my promise. Aurora will become part of Albion, and its people will be our equals in every way. The Queen has spoken. Aurora shall be rebuilt as part of Albion, and equal to every other part of the Kingdom. Thank you, Majesty. You have proven to be a woman of honor. Aurora is proud to stand at your side. Welcome to the new and improved Aurora, an oasis of friendship, camaraderie, and many other lovely things. Visit the city that Reva Industries rebuilt from sand, stone, and corpses. Enjoy the sunshine, the odd local customs, and the heavy soldier presence. Aurora, a light blooming in the darkness. A most brave decision in court today, Your Majesty. Aurora might have proven to be a rather profitable resource, but I'm sure we can find other means of filling the treasury. As a matter of fact, we could already have stumbled upon such an opportunity. Aurora may not turn out to be a waste after all. It seems that a group of Albion explorers visiting Aurora have discovered a rare diamond in the desert. They heard the legend of this extraordinary gem from the locals, and understandably set out to find it, without a moment's regard for their own lives. Which may go some way to explaining why only one of the explorers returned in one piece. He came back empty-handed, speaking of the hideous desert beings protecting the treasure. Think of the glory, Your Majesty, the adventure, the romance. The large sums of money we stand to make. The diamond is located in one of the caves beneath the Auroran wasteland, reportedly the site of an ancient abandoned temple. You need only to take it. A little something new has appeared in the sanctuary. Congratulations, you've made a friend. 
In addition to being jolly good company, friends can give each other gifts and even discounts at shops that they own. My favourite things are music and sunshine and love and pain. You seem like a very nice person. Celebrating today because today's the day you die. I can't decide whether I like your looks or your personality better.
not like those mean gnomes. I'm a million times worse. Welcome. It's, it's more beautiful than I dared to imagine. And heavy, too. Our experts estimate it's worth a small fortune. Of course, now the question becomes, what do you wish to do with this fine stone? Shall I deposit the money from the sale into the treasury? Or perhaps you would prefer the funds were channeled into, let us say, a more personal account? A truly selfless act. I am constantly in awe of your generous and noble spirit. Putting the safety of your people before your own reward. Bravo, your majesty. Bravo. The treasury is looking rather sickly, wouldn't you agree? We must always be wary of unnecessary expenditures and watch out for possible avenues of profit. With that in mind, I would like to discuss the thorny issue of child benefits, which were abolished under your brother's rule. There are vocal elements within the community who are clamoring for us to bring it back. In the interests of the treasury and of the long-term welfare of the people, I have a counter-proposal. It's somewhat radical, but rather brilliant, if you don't mind me saying. We charge. Very good, Your Majesty. Why change things when they are going so well? Perhaps Logan was right in following this course of action. Shall we proceed with the rest of your appointments? Here is the royal agenda for the day. As you can see, you have two audiences in the throne room to begin. I've heard rumors that Reaver's latest proposals are both scandalous and delicious. It should be most entertaining. My lady. Woo! I trust you. All stand to attention for the Queen of Albion. Hooray! This hearing concerns the future of the Bowerstone Shelter and Orphanage. Paige will speak for the disenfranchised people of the city. Reva will dispute her cause. You may speak. Your Majesty. The shelter has long been the only refuge for the homeless, the poor, and the orphaned. And until we can change the whole world for the better, it will continue to be their only hope of survival. Isn't it time we held out a helping hand to those who need it most? The shelter is underfunded and the building has fallen into disrepair. Invest in the shelter and orphanage, and perhaps we can begin to create a better future for Albion's forgotten people. I could not agree more. The city and its people are in dire need. But it is not charity they require. It is love. I propose we use this dilapidated building to help both them and ourselves. For love and money have always gone hand in hand. Let us inaugurate Bowerstone's first brothel. A brothel? A brothel, bordello, whorehouse. The name is unimportant. What matters is that the people get the love they need. And we get their money. Yes, it's for your majesty to decide. Refurnish the shelter and orphanage. Or convert it into a house of ill repute.
The poor of this city have suffered enough. We will renovate the shelter and orphanage. The Bowerstone shelter shall be refurbished at the Crown's expense. Thank you, Your Majesty. You've done the right thing. As you wish, Your Majesty. The parentless tykes and their destitute friends shall have a palace to call their own. Are you a beggar, too lazy to own your own clothes, or perhaps an orphan, aching for a bowl of gruel? Then come to Riva Industries Shelter and Orphanage, where you'll find food, beds, clothes, and even new parents. No matter who you are, we care, even if you don't deserve it. Today, you will deal with a pressing environmental issue, the disposal of the city's waste. Reaver will offer his proposal. A member of the Morningwood community will stand against him. You may speak. Your Majesty, I'm sure you will have noticed a certain aroma permeating the city of late, even more nauseating than usual. I fear it is not merely the stench of the underprivileged. Bowerstone is beginning to have a serious waste disposal issue. We require an inexpensive and efficient solution, and I believe I have hit upon one. Uh, now, currently, part of our waste is being disposed of in the Morningwood Marsh. With very little effort, Reaver Industries could redirect all of the Bowerstone sewer system to flow directly into that region. As you know, it's a desolate... Morningwood is to be left unspoiled. We will find other ways to deal with Bowerstone sewage problem. The Queen has spoken. Morning wood shall not be used as a waste site. The sanitation committee will look into safer alternatives. Groovy. You are like a majestuous eagle, your majesty. You are in touch with your inner, your inner innards. Granny nature thanks you from, like, the bottom of her heart. A pity. I must admit, I was rather looking forward to breathing fresh air, but I'm sure your majesty knows best. There is nothing as important as the health and hygiene of our citizens. As such, Riva Industries is delighted to announce the opening of the Bowerstone Sewage Recycling. Facility, because there can be no affluence without effluence. <laughs> the day is almost over, Your Majesty. Only one more appointment left. Page has requested a meeting in the old rebel headquarters. How very cloak and dagger. I wonder what she wants. The Sanctuary Shop has... Make me beg. Oh, he's all well, my lady. Woohoo! Hello, ma'am. <coughs> Hello, great.
It's not every day a queen walks into the rebel headquarters. You've changed the world since we last stood here. You had a lot to do with it, Paige. But we still haven't changed things enough. Without Logan's troops, crime is becoming a serious problem. There's one man in particular, Nigel Ferret. He's making this city his own. Every criminal in Bowerstone reports to him now. He's too powerful for me to deal with, and he's not easy to find. But I know how you can get to him. Good. Kid went undercover with a gang of robbers and found out their plans. They're going to strike the tavern in Bowerstone Market. If you get there in time, you can stop the raid. And at least one of those thugs must know where Ferret is holed up. A little something new. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I hate you. If you cooperate, you won't get hurt. But if you give us any trouble, we'll kill you. Now, just so you know we mean business, I'd like one of you to give us trouble so we can kill him as an example to the rest. Who's it gonna be then? Oh look, we have a volunteer. The Queen, no less. Have at her, fellas. Young lady. Make yourself useful, lad. Oi! Stop! It is no longer advantageous for any of us to frequent the hideout in industrial. Presently, I shall inaugurate a new centre of operations in Bowerstone Market. You have been provided with a key which will permit access. Please endeavour to prevent its transference to an unauthorised individual. At your service, McQueen. At your command. Attention! Madam, I trust you your well, madam. madam. My queen? Hello, your majesty. You again. It does tend to obviate the entire objective of maintaining a secret hideout if your enemies can simply infiltrate whenever they've the inclination. Lads, perform the specific services for which I employ you expeditiously. Huh? Killer! Fast! Throne's gonna be cold tomorrow without your. Shot you good, mate. I hate dogs. <laughs> You're supposed to be doing the whacking and smacking, not the other way round. I'll fix you, you. Time. 
What? Did she just... Was that... She can't be that good, surely? No, oh, did that hurt? be one of the living dead, but without the living bit. Kidnap me! Please let me out! Come on, lads, we can win this one! That's shooting up! How do you like that? I believe I can state with relative confidence that your efforts are in vain. Even should it transpire that you vanquish my associates, this door is completely impenetrable. In addition to which, this cell contains a secret egress through which I may abscond whenever I desire. Meanwhile, my compatriots shall brutalize your person. Looks like we're going to be... You haven't lost your touch. I'm surprised his men were foolish enough to fight you. Now, truth be told, my superlative intellect notwithstanding, it would appear this is not, in fact, the specific cell I so confidently referenced earlier. The one with the secret exit has two beds. All right, you have prevailed, Your Majesty. I concede. However, I entreat you to entertain a certain proposal. You have nothing to offer, Ferret. It's over. Ah, that pronouncement is objectively devoid of merit. I happen to have on my person a substantial quantity of currency. Let me go free, and the money is yours. As far as I'm concerned, you can stay in there and rot. But that's for the Queen to decide. You royal miscreant! This grievous malefaction shall be rewarded with equally grievous retribution.
I'm sorry to say we are falling well short of expectations. The treasury holds nowhere near enough gold. But the kingdom demands your attention once more. The time has come to make a decision on Albion's drinking laws. Under Logan's rule, our sit- Very good. Perhaps this is not the time to be implementing radical new measures. It will give both the gentry and the rabble something to complain about. Who knows, it may take their minds off their impending doom. Let us move on to other matters, Your Majesty. You have a busy day in the throne room ahead. Samuel, the head of the Brightwall Academy, is ready to plead his case. I sincerely hope he isn't after a handout, though I'm sure Master Reaver will be the voice of reason, as always. Greetings, madam. At your command. Woohoo! All stand for the Queen. This is very exciting. We're going to see how the country is. Today, you decide on the status of the Bright Wall Academy, Your Majesty. Samuel will speak for the town and its scholars. Reaver will dispute his cause. You may speak. <clears throat> your Majesty, it was your mother who opened the doors to Albion's greatest seat of learning. Under her rule, knowledge and culture flourished, and so did the people of Brightwall. I ask only that you return to the wisdom of those days. Your brother closed the academy down, but it is in your hands to restore it. There is no greater proponent of the arts than myself, and I celebrate knowledge in all its forms. But our people are frightened and confused. The last thing they need is knowledge. Allow them the benefit of ignorance. Let only those who are truly prepared make use of the academy. The elite of our society will pay handsomely to indulge in erudition. Uh, but, but, but only the rich will be able to afford to learn. Precisely. Why give wisdom away when one can charge for it? What do you wish to do, Your Majesty? The Bright Wall Academy will be open to all who wish to learn. The Bright Wall Academy shall be reopened and Albion will once again have a free center of learning. Oh, thank you, Your Majesty. This is the start of a new day for us all. Very well. I will make the arrangements at once. Stimulate your intellect in the newly reopened Brightwall Academy. Suckle the knowledge from the land's greatest minds and avail yourself of the best library ever assembled. Everyone, from the most impoverished genius to the wealthiest idiot, is welcome. Brightwall Academy. Whatever you earn, it's the place to learn. The court summons Page and Reaver. The matter before you today is the future of Bower Lake. Reaver will offer his proposal. Page will stand against him. You may speak. Your Majesty, a recent survey of Bower Lake has found that the waterbed is rich in valuable metal. Now, as amusing as it would be to make workers hold their breath as they mine these resources, I fear it would be impractical. Instead, we have no choice but to dam the river and drain the lake of all water. Once that is done, we will have a ready-made quarry, ripe for the plucking. It will be a pity to disfigure the landscape so close to my former home. But it is a sensible course of action in light of our current needs. 
Bower Lake is the last piece of natural beauty remaining in Bowerstone. It belongs to our history and should be protected. Don't take it away from us. You'll be taking away part of this city's soul with it. Oh, really? Now that we've finally freed the people of this city, are we going to destroy the one place they can find peace? The decision is yours to make, Your Majesty. Paige is right. We must protect our natural resources. Bower Lake is to be left untouched. The Queen has ruled. Bower Lake's natural beauty is hereby protected by order of the Crown. Thank you. Gold, I bow to your greater wisdom. As someone whose home has overlooked the resplendent Bower Lake, I am pleased to declare the official protection of this natural wonder. May its water drown anyone who doesn't appreciate its beauty. I trust the court was not too dull today. In any case, I'm confident your final task will be most enjoyable. A loyal and wealthy member of our community has offered to make a sizable donation to our treasury. Her only request is that you go to Millfields to make the collection in person. A perfect chance to stretch your legs, Your Majesty. Welcome to the sa Look, I know where the thief is. He fled into the woods. Madam, I understand you want to recover what you've lost, but those woods are simply too dangerous. It would be suicide to enter them without combat experience, or training, or skill. I don't want to enter them. I want you to. Right. I was talking about me. Oh, just forget it. Ah, oh, Your Majesty, it's such an honor to have you here. If only fate hadn't conspired to make me look like a fool. I so wanted to make a contribution to the noble cause. What's the use of a priceless heirloom if we're all going to perish in who knows what frightful way? Beware the woods, Your Majesty. The soldiers may be superstitious, but there's no denying dangerous beasts lurk within. Good luck. I know you will succeed. Looking for the statue, Your Majesty? Follow the White Calvary.
right, you monster. Prepare to meet your... Oh, oh I'm so sorry. For a moment there, I thought you were a Belverine. Damn things are always trying to get through our defenses. We burn silver nitrate in those lamps to keep them out. Kills them pretty quick if they hang around for too long. If a lamp goes out, well, I don't like to think what might happen then. One went out just recently, but we got it lit again fast. The man responsible, this bloke Connor, got punished. Severely. Before he disappears into the forest, he tells us there's gonna be a reckoning. He's probably in 25 different stomachs right now. That's my reckoning. You can come on out, everyone! It's safe! Hello, your majesty. Yippee! <laughs> Your Majesty, I've been expecting you. You've been through the village, have you? Charming hamlet. It's full of warm, wonderful people who'll give you the shirt off their back and condemn you to death for one simple mistake. Anyone can fall asleep on watch. You exile him into this forest and call it justice. But enough about that. You're here for that statue. It's quite a remarkable thing. It did everything the legend said it would. And now I don't need it anymore. <laughs> it's funny how things change. So if you want to take it back to that prig in Millfields, it's yours. Nearly free of charge. All I ask is a small favor. Destroy those silver nitrate lanterns. Then the village will get a taste of justice. The choice is yours. And it's a simple one. How simple? If you decline, my brothers will kill you. Ah oh well. I suppose it was too much to hope for. Still, your choice won't save the village. Now that I'm the leader of the pack, we've got some brains to go with our brawn. We'll lose a few of the weaker members, but we'll deal with those lanterns on our own. In the meantime, killing you will be a good way to, shall we say, get the blood flowing.
stronger than I imagined. Your majesty, but not strong enough. Prepare yourself for death. Thank you. Thank you. You've saved us from certain destruction. We're in your debt. You'll always be welcome here, should you wish to return. Connor had this on him. It looks like a Belverine. It's yours if you want it. Love the way you rule the kingdom, your majesty. Absolutely ace. I have a cousin who lives there. You're one oh. of the good ones, your majesty. You're back! Did you find the thief? Did you recover the statue? Of course she did. She is the queen, and thus infallible. If you will hand the statue to me, your majesty, I will endeavor to appraise it. You found it? Oh, I can barely contain my tears. Oh, excuse me, Your Majesty. I, I can't let you see me this way. Uh, and please, make make good use of it. N a magnanimous gesture, indeed. Your subjects are lucky to be ruled by one so giving. With the fatidic attack not far away now, it is rather discouraging to see the treasury doing so poorly. We must steel ourselves for some hard choices if we wish to survive. As for today's first order of business, you may have heard about the dire situation the kingdom's economy finds itself in. Logan's policies always kept our cities on the edge of bank. You are such a giving, magnanimous person. Very well, I will make the arrangements. Life will be easier for your subjects for a while, but the treasury will not easily recover. I only hope we haven't thrown away our chances of survival. Of course, you could always replenish our gold supplies by donating from your personal funds. Shall we proceed with today's agenda?
Kaelin, the representative for the Auroran people, has requested an audience with you. The court awaits in the throne room. Greetings, Your Majesty. Your Majesty. Gosh, I don't know. I trust what you. Said. All stand to attention for the Queen. Today you must decide how much protection to grant Aurora. Kaylee will offer her proposal. Reva will stand against her. You may speak. Your Majesty, as you know, the threat from the deserts that surrounds my city has not diminished. The darkness could fall upon us once more at any moment. Aurora is Aurora part of is your under kingdom our now, and I ask that you it grant our us duty protection. to build this outpost. Build a desert the queen's outpost decision that is can final. warn my people. A military Should outpost the shall be erected in the deserts that surround Aurora. We shall not forget this gesture. Aurora thanks you. Ah, you are a whimsical monarch, and that is why you are so beloved. Very well, it shall be done. Riva Industries is proud to present an exotic tale of romance, adventure, and sand. The Desert Outpost. Bring forth Sabine of the Mist Peak Dwellers. Today, you decide on the fate of Mispeak, home of the Dwellers, Your Majesty. Sabine will speak for his people and their land. Reva will dispute his cause. You may speak. I come here seeking nothing but what was promised me and my people. You pledged to restore our home mountains and our right to dwell in them. We have fulfilled our end of the bargain. We have paid with our lives to sit you on that throne. Now you must fulfill your end. Undo the damage your brother did to our land, and our agreement shall be satisfied. Your Majesty, this sounds both an unnecessary expense and an impudent demand. What value is there in a few trees languishing amongst snow and rock? This is not the time to indulge some idyllic fantasy. Those forests are a resource, and we are in dire need of resources. I propose we expand on your brother's initiative and take what nature offers so readily. Say the word, and I will transform the worthless wasteland of Mist Peak into assets we can use to defend Albion. These hands are not yet so old or weak that I can't wring that pretty little neck of yours, Reaver. Huh? The refined retort of a true mountain goat. You made a promise to Sabine, but it's up to you whether you decide to honor it. I will keep my promise to the dwellers. The Miss Peak Mountains shall be restored. Miss Peak shall become a protected region, and the dwellers shall be granted authority over its forests and resources. You are true to your word and your honor. The dwellers will stand by you till the end. The forests of Mist Peak are our greatest national treasure, and now. Thanks to Reaver Industries, they have returned to their past splendor. Dwellers, birds and bunnies are free to roam, laugh and kill each other as nature intended. Who needs all that lumber anyway? Happy anniversary, Your Majesty. One year as Queen of Albion. Doesn't time just fly?
To celebrate this momentous day, I have prepared some fantastic events. First, you will stand still for several hours while a local artist paints your portrait. Then, you will choose the 47 varieties of flowers you wish to be cast at your feet as you parade through the city. Oh, and you will need to sign thousands of autographs, of course. Let's see, you will also be... The day has come, Queen. It is time for you to face the darkness. But you will do so in your true form. Over the past year, you have made decisions that reveal your nature, and which have affected the lives of all your subjects. You have tried to be a just and popular ruler, but your good intentions have come at a great cost. Most of your people will not survive this attack, but you are more than a queen. You are a hero. You are Albion's champion. It's Protector. This coming battle is the reason you had to take Logan's place. Only you can defeat the creature that dwells in the shadows. If you do not, your kingdom will be gone, and you will die with it. Now go. Do what you were born to do. It's here. The darkness has reached Powerstone. The attack has barely begun, but already we have suffered terrible casualties. We simply weren't ready. If we don't act quickly, there may not be a kingdom left to defend by dawn. We have to get out on the streets, now! Today we fight for Albion! For, for Albion! Albion. My queen, you brought Charge! this on yourself. Defend the city with your life. Yes. No armor is stopping you, is it? That armor is thick, but you can still shoot through. How'd you like that, eh? Nice one. He's not getting up again. <laughs> It's here! You're very it's true, here. it's true. But that just means you've got further to fall. Ever shut up. With two crack shots like us, we might stand a chance! The light bringers have save our come! Thing. But this is the kingdom of unlight now! This! is the kingdom of death! You can never escape darkness. It flocks to you always.
fingers talk. Dead fingers whisper. Dead fingers claw at one million eyes. Desperation. Pick that up. Yes. No armor is stopping you, is it? Ouch! That must have hurt. That dying up. Come on. Don't let me Do not me. provoke us with the bone gleam shining from your broken bodies. It is a transgression against the night! Getting close to that thing. Where are you? Show yourself. The lost sheep returns to the flock. No one ever leaves the darkness behind. so many of you already. Why fight me any longer? All that you love will become shadow. All that you see will become death. It's been inside me all this time, but it's light now. I can see the sky, and it's light. 
I don't think I can fight anymore. It's all over, Walter. We won. We beat it together. Do you remember the stories I tell you when you were a child? <laughs> there was a great queen once. The mightiest hero of them all. Remember what you would say. Teach me to be a hero. You've done me proud. You've always done me proud. <sighs> oh, Walter. <laughs> I think old Walter would have liked it out here. He was always a fan of looking tall and stony. I can imagine what he'd say if he was here now. Shut up, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's time I return to my own castle. If ever you need to save the world from another abomination, you know where to find me. My people shall never forget what you have done for them. We are proud to be part of Albion. I shall return to Aurora in the knowledge that we may at last enjoy peace. Farewell, Your Majesty. Walter was right about you. You're a hero in every sense of the word. The hero Albion needed. What will you do now? I will continue to serve you the best way I can. I belong down in the city. The people there will always need help. Goodbye, my queen. You have done what I thought impossible. You are the ruler I could never be. But you don't need me anymore. And Albion will heal easier without me. Well, queen, old chum, ruler supreme, pal, you did it. You saved the kingdom. And it's my turn to say goodbye. I'm not cut out to be a general. And I think I'd like to start travelling again. Or maybe see if Paige needs any help down in industrial. But before I go, let's send off our friend in style, shall we? This one's for you, Walter. This is the world as it could have been. Devoid of color, devoid of life. It is thanks to you that it isn't so. And you did it without becoming a tyrant. The people love you, and you have banished the shadow of your brother's reign. You kept your promise to Sabine and his people, when it would have been easier to turn your back on them. A noble gesture. You swore an oath to Paige to better the lives of your people, and you did so even in the face of great danger. You did for the Aurorans what your brother would not. He broke his promise, but you proved to be the better leader. Without the strength to make those choices, we would not be standing here now. Perhaps we shall meet again one day, Queen. Aren't you going to tell me my future? The future will reveal itself when it is ready to do so.
Awaiting your command, my lady. Hello, ma'am. Milady. At your service. Majesty. At your command. You have accomplished something quite extraordinary. I do not think even your mother could have equaled it. The kingdom teetered on the brink of annihilation, and yet we live, all thanks to you. As for me, I'm just an old servant, and that is what I will always be. You know where to find me should you ever require my assistance, madam. With the new, I always say, though I prefer to keep the old handy as well.